joining us today for Master Coaches Wednesday Weekly Buzz and our after show Buzz Reaction. I'm Ruth Nelson, joined by Hall of Famers Mick Haley, Barbara Tucci, and Brian Gimilero, bringing you the most current issues and trends in volleyball. Our weekly news show has leaders in our sport provide their perspective on the questions that are asked, along with a discussion on topics that are current and ones that are affecting all of us. Our newsflash. Olympic medal count as of today, China leads with 32 gold and USA 25. However, the total medal count is USA 79, China 70, and host country Japan 40, of which 21 are gold. USA women indoor and beach Ross and Kleinman are in the pursuit of an Olympic medal. Want to make a difference? Remember to renew your AVCA membership, this one organization that represents all coaches at all levels when lobbying for changes that are needed in our sport. And you can make a difference by registering AVCA. After our show today, now that you're a member, jump over to AVCA webinar as today listed at the ABC at the net publication. NIL reform is predicted to be the biggest fundamental change in collegiate sports since Title IX. Well, Today's guests will be di diving deep into NIL and how they feel it affects the collegiate athlete, the family, and the corporate partners. So let's head over to Austin, Texas with former Olympic coach Mick Ailey, who will introduce our guest today. Mick, we have an hour show packed into 25 minutes, so let's jump in. All right, Ruth, we'll go quickly. Uh, we have three outstanding guests today uh, featuring uh, Lexi Sun, outside hitter for Nebraska, uh, who's really knee deep in this NIL stuff. And we're really pleased to have her on uh, her sponsoring organization represented by Natalie Hagelin, four time all American from USC uh, now executive sales uh, director for Wren is here to talk about uh, their sponsorship and partnership with Lexi. And of course we have a guy by the name of Conrad, who we call Lexi's dad. He's on the show today to talk to us a little bit about parents. So, Thank you all for being on and welcome to all three of you. I'm going to jump right in and I'm going to jump uh, in to talk to Natalie Haglin here a little bit. Uh, Nat, uh, wonderful to get back uh, to, to uh, have a few minutes with you, but uh, we have to talk business today. So tell me, what are you doing? Your executive sales uh, uh, or executive sales uh, representative for Wren. Tell me about Wren and, and what you're doing there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for having us on here. I absolutely love what you guys do. And by the way, the intro is absolutely amazing. I'm obsessed with your guys' introduction on that. Um, so thank you guys. Appreciate you. Having us. Uh, but yeah, I work for Ren Athletics. We are just in volleyball. So we provide custom volleyball apparel to a lot of volleyball clubs, a lot of universities and a lot of high schools throughout the country. So um, we're just really excited to be here, getting our name out there. And of course, representing Lexi has been an absolute dream of ours. It's been wonderful for both partnerships and i um, excited to be here to talk about it. Well, let's go. Let's go into this uh, real fast. Uh, you know, you've had a storied career as a collegiate uh, standout volleyball player, both uh, both in college and with the national team. It must be somewhat baffling to you to see what's happening now in collegiate sports and the opportunities opening up for players. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, of course, I wish this would have happened a long time ago. I think that would have been a game changer for us athletes. Um, I graduated in 2014. So, of course, didn't have that opportunity. But now just looking forward in the position that I'm in with Ren Athletics, um, I think that this is an incredible opportunity for us to partner with amazing, incredible athletes who have like minded interests and like minded goals to our company. I think it's just a great opportunity for our company as a whole. So I'm really excited for that side of it. With your experience in the sport, how does this help you help Lexi and help the company? Well, I think Lexi's going to be just fine. She's been incredible to work with, but I think it's cool. Um, our whole company is volleyball athletes, ex-volleyball athletes, current volleyball athletes. So I think it's cool that we can kind of relate to the athletes that we work with, that we relate to everything in the industry, everything we're developing. So I think it's fun just to have Lexi come in, hear her side of her experience, and just to kind of be able to relate and gel like that. It's really cool. Will you pursue other athletes or is this a wait and see kind of project to see how this goes? Yeah, I mean, we are open to every opportunity that we can get. I think... For us, it's more important to partner with athletes like Lexi, who just, again, have like-minded goals, um, 
who are interested in customization, who are interested in style and fashion and quality, because that's what our company is all about. So I think we're interested in learning about more athletes who are interested in working with us as long as they really align with what we're doing as a company. And, and that's why we're so excited that Lexi is a part of this. Do you, what do you expect will happen with your sponsorship with Lexi? Do you, do you expect a whole, whole line of things or do you expect a lot of other, sorry, my phone here, a lot of other things to, to take place? Um, uh, how, do you, how do you see this partnership working? Yeah, I mean, kind of came into this just like everyone else did. You know, we had no idea what was going to happen. Um, it, it was all new to everybody. So all I can say is that after the first promotion that we did with her, we were so successful on both ends. I think Lexi did so much for us. We helped her develop this product that she absolutely loved. And I think there was so much buzz around it and so much excitement about the product that we sold out early. And uh, that being said, of course, I think we're going to develop some new awesome things. Um, and, you know, it's, it's all backed up by Lexi. So it's, it's really her style coming to life. It's her, it's kind of her. And then we're kind of helping her with uh, our customization and our ability to create things that are really high quality for volleyball athletes. Reading about the, Olymp about the Olympics and the athletes there, it seems like the women athletes are looking for somewhat smaller sponsors where they can get some individual uh, assistance and be more a part of what's going on as opposed to some of the bigger operations that Nike and Adidas and those companies out there uh, uh, have. You don't get the same input. It is, is that what you're doing with Ren? And do you plan to involve um, influencers and people to help you with the marketing? Uh, or is that something that uh, you think the athlete's going to do? Yeah, well, you know, I think that's our whole MO with our company is that we are a small company and we don't really have any interest in growing to be as big as Nike. We are just in volleyball. We go to every tournament that we can. We're really good friends with all of our partners. We're really involved. And I think that we want to stay involved in volleyball as long as possible with as many people as possible. So I think for us, healthy growth is great. Um, and having Lexi being involved and being able to really produce exactly what she wants um, is great. And yeah, like, like you said, I think she has a lot of say, which is really fun for us to learn because she's obviously stylish and um, she has a lot of great input about what the kids are loving these days. So it's been awesome. Nat, thank you so much. I'm really excited. I, I love your uh, other product that you have besides your uniforms, your setters uh, training product there. What, what's the name of it? Can you help it, help me with that? It is called On Point. It's On awesome. Point. It's like a setters eye, setters target. Um, you can find it on our website. So Best I training really device that. I've yeah. used out there. <laughs> uh, thanks so much for you guys uh, allowing me to purchase one, but I, I, I find it to be very useful. All right, let's move to Brian. Brian, let's get our star on here. Uh, <laughs> see, see what kind of questions you've got for Lexi. She said, bring it on. So let, let's go for it. <laughs> Well, I was hoping I was going to be the star. Suddenly, <laughs> hi, Lexi. You are. You are. Yeah. <laughs> hi, Lexi. Congratulations. Congratulations on graduating. And the congratulations on being in graduate school and a fifth-year senior. And you're kind of a pioneer in all this. I have several questions, but to start off, what are you, what are you feeling or thinking? How do you see this role, this brand-new role, and how you can guide other people? Yeah, Other absolutely. Players. Well, first of all, I just want to say thank you guys so much for having me on. Um, it's such an honor and I'm so excited to get to talk to you guys today. Um, it's crazy. I think it's really, really exciting to be a part of making history. Um, and like you were talking about before, this is probably the biggest, next biggest thing for college sports since Title IX. Um, and it's just really exciting that I get to be a part of it and um, be here for the next few months to start it off. What what are you what are you getting feedback from uh, teammates, coaches, player? I mean, um, community. What what's the feedback you're getting? It's been overwhelming. Um, obviously, living in Nebraska, we have an amazing fan base and support system. And so, going into it, I knew that I would get people reaching out to me and I would get interest. But over the last month, it's been overwhelmingly amazing. Um, and for me, it's just figuring out who I want to work with and what brands align with my brand. 
Um, and so, yeah, figuring out how it all works and learning the rules and what you can and can't do. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's just kind of been the last few weeks for me. And it's been really exciting um, to get the opportunity to do this. Well, we, we said how fashionable you were. We just had pictures up there. And I really like the glasses, by the way. They're, <laughs> those are great. <laughs> so, so do you have concerns? Are there concerns about other teammates in, in terms like of jealousy or, or the, are they looking for you to help uh, guide them? What kind of feedback are you getting there? Yeah, um, obviously, because it's everyone's first time, I think we're just trying to navigate what kind of aspect and component this is gonna bring into college sports and the team atmosphere and all those things. Um, I think just being super open in communication with the team um, and kind of figuring out ultimately, yes, we're here for volleyball and this is our goal as a team. Um, all the other things come second and this is just another thing that's gonna come second to us. Um, I think just focusing on what our, our values are and where our priority priorities lay is the biggest thing and then um, just going from there do you feel like you need to reassure that are you anticipating that you need to reassure people of that goal throughout the season are you thinking you know maybe I need to remind them that this is my this is my number one priority absolutely I think just being aware of it um, I think that all of my teammates and basically everyone right now is getting a ton of deals and offers um, and so just understanding how much we can do with that and the impact that we can have, but then also focusing on what we're actually here for. Yeah, yeah I think it's wonderful. And I, I, it's such a new thing, you know, where no one kind of knows and it, but it's really exciting. And I, and I wish the best for you. Uh, what, what else do you want let, to, let's say there's, and there are going to be some young people watching here, mm -hmm. high school kids, other college players, what what have you learned so far that where you can guide or help? Yeah, absolutely. Um, for me and outside of volleyball, the biggest thing has just been staying true to myself um, through social media and just really being me and not trying to overdo it or do things that aren't um, my authentic true self. And so that's been my biggest thing and biggest focus. And at the end of the day, the reason I'm here is because of volleyball and the platform that it's blessed me with. Um, and so, yeah, I would say just keep focusing on volleyball and other things will come along the way. Yeah. So you're telling other people don't, you know, it's nice to be involved, but stay focused on, on <laughs> who you are. Absolutely. A hundred percent. And from my position, I think you are a great spokesperson for, for women's volleyball, you know, that, this, we need to get off the ground with it. We need to realize as women volleyball players that they're not more important than the other sports, but also they're not less important. And uh, so I think it's great that you're doing that. I'm going to turn this over to Bob, but Lexi, it was great talking to you. Thank you so, so much. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Lexi, my, my questions are, are more for Lexi's dad. <laughs> so I'd like to switch to Lexi's dad right now. You know, being a parent, uh, you know, parent of, of five kids that played in college athletics, I'm just happy that they're all graduated. And I don't have to deal with with uh, all these issues that I kind of think are going to happen. So, Conrad, what do you think parents need to know to advise their child uh, going into this new, you know, new frontier, if you will, of college athletics? Great question, Bob. First of all, I want to say thank you for having me on. Um, I am known as Lexi's dad, and I'm privileged <laughs> with that. But I also am uh, privileged to know that I'm online here with a lot of great volleyball minds, and I'm the only one that has no mind of volleyball. So <laughs> I feel honored of that. So thank you. Um, Bob, you know, I, I think the, the question uh, comes to, this is new for everyone. And I think it's also new for parents. And we as parents are navigating through this thing um, for the very first time. I, I do believe from a parent's more of a personal perspective, this is long overdue. I think it's long overdue. I think uh, athletes at this particular level, especially a high level have contributed a lot to the game and to the NCAA. And it's, some, it's way past due in terms of what they should be getting out of this particular situation. Now, as a parent, I feel like 
you know, I, I, I want to be there to support. I want to be there to help just like every other parent. Um, but it really depends on the relationship that you have with your child uh, and parent child relationship. If the relationship is good enough where you can input, where you can give advice, where they can actually seek advice from you, then I, I believe we will continue to do that. And I will continue to do that. No different than a child coming to you and saying, hey, what do you think about going to XYZ University? What do you think about me taking on or going into this particular major? What do you think about this girlfriend or that boyfriend? All of these life changing decisions, I, I feel like this is one of those that I believe should be involved. Well, you know, as a parent, I'm sure you must be concerned about the effects it's going to have, you know, on Lexi's academics. Now, of course, Lexi has already graduated. Now she's into her, her grad year. Uh, you know, she's obviously figured it out. But, you know, I'd be pretty concerned if my child was going in as a freshman and having to deal with this. You know, what, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. I think that this just brings in another element of distraction, not only from an academic standpoint of view, but if your child is actually going into a school to play a sport, I think the sport itself is demanding enough on top of athletics. I think you guys all know how demanding that can be. I think that again, it's, it's learning how to navigate and with another responsibility. Um, and the other, the other thing that I think that could also be helpful is that the child learns to maybe have somebody vet some of the requests that they are getting through either an agent or through a possibly a sponsor and look at it from a perspective of, is this in line with what my child wants to do or is doing? Maybe not even go down that road, allowing that to kind of just filter through and only pass on the good ones and pass on the ones that really mean something this way, it takes a lot of their distraction away from things that really don't mean anything. So that's my suggestion. Okay. And you, you know, you kind of alluded to the time commitment. Uh, you know, I, I've been division one athletics for over 40 years and, and the time commitment, most people don't realize the time commitment for the sport and the academics that are on these athletes, how are they going to have time? And how do you feel about, you know, your child having to try to make time to deal with, you know, different companies and different requests. And yeah, I think the time factor it is definitely going to come in play, especially with something that's new. They're actually looking at something completely different than the, what they're used to. They're not looking at academics from a learning or a memorizing standpoint of view or playing with the, if the sport that they've been playing for many years. They're used to that. But all of a sudden, the rigor becomes different. The rigor becomes now you throw a business element into it or a, a communication style or a communication method that has never been dealt with um, or a conversation that deals with compensation and deals with things that they have never talked about. That, that part of it, I believe, will demand more attention, more focus, more time and more learning than any other thing. So yeah, you're right. It will take a lot more time and it will take away from what they are supposed to be there doing. Yes, I, be I believe that. So is that where the role of the parents gonna be really critical, you know, uh, in terms of support so they can navigate some of those things because the, the athletes haven't dealt with any of that. You know, we've heard stories of how athletes get taken advantage of at the pro level, you know, yeah. all the time. Yeah, I, I think that that is absolutely something that I would recommend all parents, if they have the relationship, um, to be involved as much as possible to help and navigate through some of those questions and some of those issues and some of those new nuances that they deal with when it comes to business, when it comes to communication, when it comes to talking about sponsors, and also take on the responsibility of how much can the, the student athlete really take the student athlete is already struggling with school and already struggling with the demands of volleyball or basketball or football, or whatever that might be, you know, maybe taper that back a little bit and maybe help them to understand that this is going to require a lot of time of your time to um, do the things that you're required to do when the sponsorship sponsor is asking for. Yeah. I mean, we've talked about Lexi, you know, in our, our shows before, just as talking about, you know, NIL and 
you know, as I understand it, she actually has her social media following is is stronger than the quarterback of Nebraska. All right, so she's she's going to be thick into this, and I, I can only imagine that that your support is going to be really critical. I think streamlining streamlining on what you actually want to focus on. I mean, there's going to be a a lot of them that come in that don't align up with what she wants to do. And she can just kind of move that aside and not even worry about dealing and talking about that. So I think streamlining is really important. If you believe in health, if you be, believe in nutrition, if you believe in uh, having nice fashion. So focus on that. Anything else that comes along, maybe just push that off to the side. Be okay, more. I have a couple other questions, but we're going to probably run out of time. So no I'm bet. Gonna, I'm going to kick it back to Ruth because uh, there's so much to cover. Oh, I love it, Bob, because usually when you say I have a couple more questions, you keep going. All right, Lexi, <laughs> I've got a great idea for you. Okay. Graduate school, become a lawyer and represent all these kids, and you already have all the experience and everything. That's one. All right. Second thing is, is now whatever all these parents that are millennial parents, the helicopter, the lawnmower, all of them, guess what? Now they got something to do. <laughs> because they can manage all this. All right, so let's jump over to the followers. Okay, over 100,000 followers. Now, I don't know how Mick promised a million today, but you have 100,000 followers on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And recently, one of your posts, which, you know, was a while back, you know, you had 64,000 uh, likes. Now, I've got a question to you. And I want you to answer it as diplomatic as you can and honest at the same time. How much time do you spend daily or weekly on social media? And will that change now with your endorsements? Wow, that is a good question. <laughs> um, I'm very curious. I don't even know what, what post you're talking about. Oh yeah, uh, you just post the one about Nebraska. It was in uh, December, 64,000. Uh, <laughs> okay. Wow. Um, I spend a decent amount of time on social media, but I do try to be pretty picky choosy about how much time I spend. Uh -huh. Um, I think that it can definitely become overwhelming and too much if I'm spending too much time on that. Um, Did so you I give me a number of hours. I don't know. But you say one hour a day or more. I would I say, about an, I would say about an hour. Yeah. Cause I look at your posts. <laughs> okay and do you choose one over the other social like media social platform, media platform? Mm -hmm. i definitely like instagram the best i would okay. say that's my favorite okay and mm -hmm. since you were diplomatic on your answers what would you suggest for high school kids on recommending how much time to spend as little as possible. I think definitely posting so that you have somewhat of a presence on social media, but definitely not being consumed in it and wrapping your identity and life around it. So I think, I think there's definitely a healthy limit to go about it. Okay. So I'm going to recommend one other profession. You need to be the lobbyist because you're very diplomatic. So you're <laughs> definitely going to have a lot of followers. All right. So do you feel female athletes have opportunities with NIL? And do you think it's only with D1, D2, D3, NIA junior? Is it, or is it everybody has an opportunity? Yeah, I think from what I've been hearing, everyone has an opportunity to a certain extent. Um, I think being in Nebraska with the support that we have um, with Husker Nation and being on the volleyball team here, I think that we are definitely one of the female college sports that gets the most attention um, and I'm super blessed and grateful for the, being in this position and getting to see all of these different opportunities but um, I would say it's definitely different depending on the school and location and uh, the team and all of those things. Okay I know Mick has one question but I'm going to ask Natalie and Conrad do you consider yourself a social influencer for Lexi? Conrad? Do you Absolutely. post a lot? Absolutely post? not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was curious what he would say. Um, no, I think Lexi, Lexi is so great because she does everything on her own. And like she said, she's so true to herself. So I don't think even if we tried to post for her, 
mm -hmm. she would let us. And we don't want to do that either. That's why we align okay. ourselves with athletes that are um, like-minded. So, all right, Nick. Yeah. So I, if I can jump in that. So you remember when we were doing well at SC, Pete Carroll was the first to really go out as a, as a coach out there and, and be on the social media warpath, so to speak. And he immediately saw that it was too big for him. And he hired a person uh, at least one to start with who who did all of his postings all day long and it wasn't that they didn't uh, post his op opinions but he just couldn't physically sit down and do that and and he was out there on every possible avenue the question Ruth asked is important because if Ren would supply some help for Lexi uh, then coach Cook wouldn't have to do what he told us he was going to do Lexi's when he had a water break, he would give you five minutes to get on the phone and talk to your agent. So, um, <laughs> and you can tell him I said that. Um, but uh, but uh, I would think, Lexi, this is going to get big for you. And if you say your teammates are also getting offers, are any of them thinking about hiring a person? And have you thought about hiring a person to handle all of this uh, social media and marketing that's coming up for you? Yeah. After seeing what I've seen the last month um, and <laughs> just the amount of people reaching out, I, yes, I definitely have a team set up so that when season starts, which is literally next week, we have a game plan as to filtering through messages and emails and all those things. And then basically I'm just being the one for the ones that actually align with me and what I'm trying to do those are the ones I'm seeing. And those are the ones that I'm having the conversations and being involved in. Um, when it comes to the social media, actual content, um, I'm pretty particular with the things that I like and um, the things that I want to post. So I'm always going to be super involved in that process. And you think you'll have time to do that? <laughs> I will. Yes, I will have time to do that. Good luck, Coach Cook. All oh, right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I I have a question too. Now but we are out of time. I hate to say this. We are out oh, of time. And Ruth, you do always do that. No, I don't. I just, <laughs> if I say that you're going to mute me, so I'll be no. caught. <laughs> okay, Mick wanted to thank you guys personally because I know that he's worked very hard on getting you three on. I did want to thank all three of you and, and uh, can't tell you how much fun this is for me. Uh, and Lexi, last time we talked, I was standing behind you in line at Starbucks uh, in Austin. So I don't know if you remember that or not. But, um, and Nat, it's been too long. You got to come visit. All right. I'm there. I'm there. All right. We are out of time. For those coaches that are interested in our consulting services, please go directly to our website, volleyballmastercoaches.com and click on the contact form and we will look forward to customizing the in-person or virtual clinic for you. Missed one of our shows or maybe our Remax flashbacks, jump over to our Instagram account and click on our YouTube. Follow us on Facebook, Volleyball Master Coaches, Instagram and Twitter, VB Master Coaches. A special shout out to our partners, SNA Sports, Bodden Sports, Wren, and thanks to our content providers, NFHS, JVA, Coaches Insider, and ABCA. Stay on Facebook Live after John closes our show today as we will hear from Master Coach's thoughts on today's NIL buzz. So let's go to Buzz and Buzz Reaction digital partner, Dr. John Foreman, who will update us on his most recent podcast. Thanks, Ruth. Uh, podcast, I don't know. But actually, the most recent recording I did was for a, an upcoming academic presentation that's going to be in Korea, of all places. So I'm going to have to be up in the wee hours of the morning, evening, I forget which to moderate some stuff. But beyond that, eventually I'll share it with people. So keep an eye out on the, on, the, uh, on the blog, on social media, all that sort of stuff. But that's enough about me. Let's get on with talking more NIL and uh, say thanks to the guests. For those joining us for the first time on Buzz Reaction, today we begin with our master coaches continued discussion on NIL and what and how it might affect collegiate athletes, collegiate programs, parents, and the upcoming high school stars, and as well as those Olympic athletes that are coming back to finish their 
collegiate education and playing and to cash in on their Olympic performance. So let's go with Mick. No, let's go. Uh, no, Brian had a question. So let's start with him. He had. Well, are you, I thought you raised a really good point about with parents. And I think uh, Conrad could do a seminar on, on, you know, parents could be cause this to be a real negative, you know, the helicopter parents, they could be not have the ability to manage a situation where it would hurt their daughter. And uh, I just think that it could turn out to be negative about that. So I think, uh, I think there really needs to be some kind of program to tell the parents different parameters and how to, how to really deal with this to not overwhelm and hurt their daughters. Brian, right, you think this is a university responsibility or something they should offer? I, it would be nice if they offered that, but, you know, I, it would be great if they offered that, but it's also funded, you know, it has to be funded and all that. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's a problem, but I really love it. It's a great idea, Mick. I, I was going to jump in there, uh, Ruth, when you gave me the chance uh, and say, I think the coaches that thought the players were not going to be involved in much of this, except for the most elite players are wrong. Uh, all of the NIL uh, re recordings that we did with coaches, they kind of poo-pooed and down, downplayed this as not, this is going to be for football and basketball. It's basically what we heard, or at least what I heard. And Lexi's talking about all of her teammates having an opportunity here at vir virtual, uh, virtually different sponsoring opportunities and I think that's the way it's going to be. Look, each college, each university is a, a fiefdom. Uh, I, I kind of, the warlords are the coaches, uh, the universities control an environment of uh, millions of followers. Uh, if you added all the sports followers up together and those people get uh, information on the sports that are successful and those athletes who are either elite or those teams that are successful in each of these fiefdoms, which is every one of the 360 universities out there playing division one, at least uh, they have their following and their people. And there's going to be people that want to jump on the bandwagon. They're going to want to be involved here to start. I think, I think this is a huge thing that's going to happen. I don't think the coaches are prepared for this. So from what we've heard, I don't think the universities really understand how much money is going to flow into the coffers of these individuals. I don't know if the kids are prepared at all to know how to handle this. And, and listening to what I heard today is uh, Le Lexi wants to manage her her uh, feeds there and what goes out. And she's, she's going to have more than an hour's worth of of that going on, plus trying to win a national championship and, and getting her graduate degree. Uh, think about how tough that is, even with us trying to produce this show and doing the things we do. Uh, it's time consuming and there's very little time for self. So I don't know what you guys think, but that, that's how I see it going down. And uh, if you've been watching D1 Ticker out there, they're talking about uh, people buying whole teams. They're giving everybody $10,000 on a team to, to be available during a season. I mean, how are you gonna manage all of that? Well, I did like one thing she said is she was getting a team together. And I think that's something that we should say that you need to, you, not one person can do it all. So it's like in recruiting, you know, your parent might research some certain things. The player researches certain things. Your club coach researches certain things. Your counselor does certain things. So you're really developing a marketing team. And to me, that's more important than anything because what's going to happen is things are going to slip through the cracks and it's managing the whole thing. Because if you really look at it, I looked at how her numbers relate to Simone Biles and I re also relate to, you know, different other people on TikTok. And to be honest with you, she does not post a lot. She has a lot of likes and she has a lot of followers, but she has more likes than followers. So it's interesting because I, the first, do you remember when this first came out? Because we've been talking about it since March last year. They said it was all about how many followers. Now it's about likes and engagements. So now you're not talking about a kid just pushing a like. 
they now got to engage with all those fans if that's what the corporation is wanting. So well, and, management team. And if you have a weak parent uh, oh. and these, these sponsors start going through the parent, think how important the parents going to start feeling uh, some of these parents, the way they, they get the big head and that sort of thing. It's going to be a nightmare for the kids and maybe the coach and the school and the team yeah. uh, to have to, to deal with that. So uh, I think, uh, I think there's some naivety out there as to the potential of what really could happen. Plus the other things you see people posting that are getting attention um, you know, the bikini shots and all of that stuff. I, I'm, I'm not sure what's, what's going to happen here. Yeah. I think there's going to be Mick, a lot of unintended consequences to this, to this whole thing. I mean, we haven't even talked about the effect it's going to have on, you know, college athletic programs, you know, all of a sudden, why, why is Adidas or Nike going to sponsor a school when, when really the people that are making a difference on, on sales are the athletes. If that's true, then they're going to take their money and start taking paying the athletes. Yeah, here's a good analogy to that, Bob. Uh, used to be these companies would sponsor conferences, right? Well, the, the schools and the conference said, the heck with that. I'm going to get my own ball sponsor. I'm going to get my own shoe sponsor. I'm going to get this. And so the companies had it made when they could get a, con a conference with 12 teams and they could sponsor the whole conference and I had to deal with the conference commissioner. Then they had to deal. Then they, they found out they had to deal with each school. Well, this is the same way it's going to be with, with universities. They're going to have to deal with each player now. Uh, I, I really think a lot, a lot of schools and coaches are going to try to ignore this and it's going to hurt them. And the reason it's going to hurt them is the word's going to get out. The social media players you know, circle around each other and they're going to know what's going on. So the programs that aren't involved are going to get hurt. That's why I think John good. Cook was right on top of this stuff. I, I that agree. was last March. I agree, yeah. And he's yeah. not, he wasn't kidding about that five minutes to call your no, agent. He, well, we're going <laughs> to just think about it. Think about the, well, we talked about parents and that's going to be a nightmare. Kids that aren't equipped. Um, now, I, you know, I was listening to Lexi and uh, the idea that maybe the jealousy isn't going to come from the team, but from other teams. When the football quarterback doesn't get as much money as Lexi, it could be a, could be a pretty big problem there. <laughs> hey, well, we haven't addressed juniors either in high school. Think of how oh, much yeah. camaraderie with parents in junior club. Oh, yeah. Well, that's going to be the buzz. But well, like I you was, said, That was going to Ruth, be one of my next questions yeah. uh, okay. to Conrad was, you know, high school parents with, with really talented athletes. Mick and I were talking about this, and he was relating the story of the, the high school football player in Texas. Right. Yeah, South Lake High School. Yeah. Yep. He, just, he just pulled out of his senior year yep. because he can make a million dollars, and he couldn't do that because the Texas UIL rules, yep. their high school athletic association rules, wouldn't allow him to do that and play high school football. So he said, I'll take the million, pull out, and, and go, to, go to Alabama early. Well, you, know, Ruth, way, you, you, uh, you were the one that said that, uh, yeah. that the, the, uh, pull, the, the states are the ones that can make the rules. Right. So, wow, can you imagine the pressure on different states? On the governors, up? of the governor of Texas. <laughs> yeah, the governor of Texas losing this football kid because he doesn't, he doesn't bring this legislation forward. Yes, yes. Wow. And soon, it, pretty soon, I can see the list of states being published that are going to allow you know kids to make money and the ones that aren't going to be allowed are going to be in bold letters you know <laughs> can you, well, you know, know soccer's been doing this forever you know yeah. they, they bypass high school and they play right. club and then right. you hear them go and get to college and say boy i wish i would have went ahead and played high school because it was fun well you know right. what if you can make fifty thousand dollars a year that i think that sounds like fun to me <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Wow. Uh, you know, yeah. A lot it only of, lasts until it's gone, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, you know. Yeah, you better have somebody managing big, it. That's the big picture: is that uh, these are all quick hit kinds of things for a lot of these kids, and it goes away. And uh, the message has got to be: uh, you got to have a you got to have a big picture. Ruth said uh, a team in mind. Uh, uh, there got to be a lot of things put in place, or you'll just get left out. And then. 
kids looking for maybe the kid's not a good volleyball player, but has a, a wonderful body and wants to put it out there. You know, you've got those kinds of problems. I mean, there's a lot of serious issues that people have been ignoring. I remember when we interviewed one ACC coach uh, and that coach said, oh, we're not going to worry about it because we don't think it's going to involve <laughs> women's sports much. Well, I, I just, I cringed when I heard that and I cringe more because we're in the Olympic movement right now. And think about this. Would this spur you more to go on and try to make the Olympic team because you're that much more valuable? Every one of these teams and every one of these experiences now ups the ante uh, for, for your involvement, your followers, uh, adding more social media people. Uh, it seems to me that this is going to go absolutely crazy. I even see um, kids that wouldn't be playing, but they got a good social media following. There you they go. are going to try to be yep. walk-ons, you know, just yeah. to be on the team so that they can you know, use it for publicity. You know? hey, why so, not? And it helps the team too, you know, yeah, it their followers. Walk-ons, you know, with a lot of followers that I just see, suddenly I can play dad. Suddenly I can go play. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, there's one thing that, uh, that uh, the ABCA had put out for some time is who really watches women's volleyball in this country. And there's been a, a pretty dynamic group of over 45 male watchers uh, in women's volleyball for the last 20 years. But this now, this NIL might bring the young female watchers back into play here to see who not only is playing volleyball well, but who's going to be a social influencer and who's being sponsored by whom and that sort of thing. You could, you could see that possibly influencing who watches telecasts now and the numbers of people that are watching telecasts and streaming. Well, well you I've know, always this... felt that uh, women's volleyball, you know, women's volleyball really has it. it it's got the best product and the, the game looks beautiful and graceful and dynamic and powerful. And then the women are just amazing. You know, they're, they're good citizens, good students. They present themselves well in interviews. Look at Lexi. Uh, I, I'm, I, she was great, but there's also so many women and women's volleyball players. So maybe finally this will help get that image out there to the public, which okay. would help our game. So last month I reported on Sports Lab, which they do the fan project and it's dealing with fans that are female followers. And they said six times more interest in women's sports than men's sports. And it's talking about the professional level. So if you look at that and you, I mean, they have probably six or seven organizations in it. And to top it off, you look at every time you look at the Olympics, what commercial are you looking at? Something about Simone Biles. Okay. What, what, what how, I didn't understand. How can that. that be true? Yeah. How can that be true when you look at the number of people in the football stadiums and in the bleachers? Yeah. What they've done is they did a study and I, last month I reported, I'll pull back out the numbers, but they did a study of the followers now on social media. They oh. took how many hundreds of, you know, followers for all the sports. And they said that now they have more than six times more followers for women's sports. And it's a prime time to start doing more professional sports. So what they're trying to do is kick off more professional sports in the United States. Huh. And then, but my point with Simone Biles, I think every time you look around at the Olympics and maybe because I'm female, I, I look and see that, but it seemed like she's in an awful lot of commercials with NBC. Huh. Oh, well, she is, but that, that might be part of the, the, the problem. It's just so much pressure on the, the poor kid. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and the other thing is, aren't we looking at the potential of three women's professional volleyball leagues starting in the next year and a half? Didn't we report on this? Uh, one of them started this year uh, and two more are on the, on the line to, to be started. Uh, we reported on people doing that. So uh, very interesting, uh, if that's true, to see if these uh, professional leagues actually get off the ground. Is that breaking news there, Mick? No, we know, we know no. one other because we had, we had. Yeah, Love Love, and the Athletes Unlimited were the two. But I think there was some rumbling within the region, Mick, with USA Volleyball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not at, at liberty that I can. <laughs> That's right. You better not be. Yeah. Talk out there. But uh, 
but three is what I would put up as a potential. So uh, there you is go. Is this the Mick Haley League? Did we no, 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 no. But yeah, I, I've got an idea. It, Mick. I've got an idea remember. how we could do this. If I get if I get some big sponsors, I think the league's already set up. I, I think where you have all of these big tournaments, the, those are the places where the teams should be. Uh, the professional teams should grow out of those qualifying tournaments and those clubs that run those tournaments. And I think it's ready made to be set up like soccer or better uh, right now. So uh, we have felt like this for 20, 25 years. So uh, I think in 96, when I took over the national team, um, Bob Gambardella and some people, uh, we sat down and tried to envision how we could get another level of youth playing uh, to spur this uh, professional league. Uh, and the money's there because the money's in these qualifiers uh, to to do that and the sports there because the families are are following the, their kids right up through yeah. and, and they want something to do after their kids leave volleyball. So, so you're telling me that the regions or the clubs are the gonna give away, they're gonna give away the, some of this money? Yeah, I think I think they could make a lot of money by sponsoring a pro league and oh. using those funds to start that team because i think they have everything in place they have the convention centers they have the arenas i mean you look at kansas city you look at denver you look at all these places uh, louisville um places that host these tournaments philadelphia um uh, uh, atlanta uh, New orlando uh they're all perfect places uh for teams to to grow out of and our kids wouldn't have to go to Europe. I mean, all those European kids you're watching on TV right now would want to come here. Yeah. Maybe we'll use all NIL women players who are It'll making be the money NIL league. promote and, themselves. Yeah. They promote well, themselves bigger. So well they wanted to coach this last league themselves. So now they can pay for it. There you go. <laughs> I have someone that can sponsor it. So I want to throw this last thing out. It's not anything to do with volleyball, but I want to throw out Simone Biles. I want to do an analogy. In 1984, after the women played the Olympic and won the silver medal, Debbie Green and her father went on a tour. It was a countrywide tour. And I think it was, I don't know, two, three hours, $50. It was pretty inexpensive. But she would, Four, would demonstrate. 44 cities in 46 days. Okay. That's right. Okay. So here's the analogy. Simone Biles, along with a couple other athletes, and the former UCLA coach, is going to be part of the development of team. Okay. They announced last Friday and I saw NBC starting to promote it because NBC is one of the sponsors plus two of the other gymnastic sponsors. They are doing the gold over America tour and it starts in October 30 plus cities tickets range. Min the minimum is $72 to a thousand dollars for one ticket. And if you're in some cities, the suites are $3,000. Now, Simone should sponsor a pro league. Well, can, is she <laughs> going to perform in these yes. things? Or? Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, that, that was a joke. I was only kidding. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but they have everything set up. They have the beam, the runway, you know, the bars in the back. Sure. The yeah, they got everything all set okay. up in the arena. They got the tickets. You can pick what tickets you want. And we're talking 34 cities. So, anyhow. It, it, that's how you capitalize on on being at the olympics there you go which, which makes you wonder about all of this doesn't it uh i you know i i have had my thoughts about this and they've been much different than what you read in the newspapers but uh, after going through that sort of trauma and now you're going to go out and do 33 sites i i i wonder Really yeah, my concern is the handlers. Or, yeah. Who's advising her if, yeah. if she feels this way? And it's obviously she does. And it's, what a traumatic experience is to, you know, go from the yeah. frying pan into the fire, you know? But it, isn't this, Ryan, what we were talking about with Lexi is uh, if, uh, if sponsors start going after the parents to get the kids to do certain things <laughs> and they pay off uh, people like that, uh, uh, with uh, special privileges and things like that. You can just see all of that coming downhill and it's a huge river that- I, I, I think in, in the case of Lexi, Mick, it, it, it seems like she has things pretty well in hand. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. You know, I, I, it, was, it was really good hearing how she's pretty grounded uh, for whatever reason. She may be just maturity, but I also think it helps to have 
you know, a dad that's, that's a businessman that kind of understands this stuff and can advise her. And I think they're working pretty well together, but how about the people, how about the athletes that are great athletes that don't have that support system? Uh, this is going to be a nightmare. Yeah. Like you, like Mick said, you know, some schools are buying players for 10,000. Well, that's nice to get $10,000, but you're not going to hire a group to, to, you know, monitor you. And like Lexi is, Lexi's so far ahead of everybody else. I mean, she's just putting together a group to help her. I mean, this, they're, she's far ahead, but I don't, she's an anomaly. What's going to happen with the other kids is going to be completely different. Well, a lot of other kids. Well, so Brian, how about some of these companies that the schools now have started to contract with? You know, are they going to be the agents? Are they going to be the filters? Uh, and will will that end up, you know, draining some of the money off of what the athletes are going to get? Right. And will they, they're not, in my opinion, they're not going to help the lower level athlete. They're only going to spend their time on the top ones, which hurts the other ones and can cause problems, you know? Well, it's like, do you remember when they first started recruiting services? Okay. And, and that was in the early middle seventies to eighties. And then all of a sudden now you've got recruiting, look at how many recruiting services you have. I've seen unbelievable amounts. So there's like 15, there used to be five. Now there's 15 major companies that are going into schools to negotiate a group of athletes. So they can either choose or they can do a group. Well, they're not going to. Did she, did Ruth freeze for you guys? Yeah. yeah just for a second. We've been hoping for that for a year. <laughs> All right. Okay, well, let me let me Finally. throw something. Let me throw something in there that I just spotted. There. I don't know. If, did you guys see that there's going to be a new constitutional convention for the NCAA? Yes. Yes. In November, I believe. Right. Right. And, the implication and, being that they're going to have to address. I think what just happens the opposite. after all of this. I think they're going to throw up their hands and say it's your problem. That well, that's what I mean. But the, the yeah. implications of NIL are yeah, forcing them to. I don't, I don't think to, they want any part of, of trying to monitor this. They, they well, the NCAA, I mean, I'm sorry, the Supreme Court's decision really was one of those, hey, uh, everybody, uh, we're going to give you NCAA a little time. You know, they, you, you read the decision, it said, we'll give you a little time to figure this out. And then we're really going to come and make all the decisions. So you better figure it out before and otherwise you're going to lose and if the ncaa doesn't come up with a plan they're going to really lose they're going to the end the supreme court is exactly. just going to side well, with the last them. thing we want is our congressmen and senators running the athletic program in this country oh my god they have enough trouble just trying <laughs> to do the normal things they're supposed to be doing yeah i can't yeah are we paying those guys? I just yeah. no, I hope not. no, they're they're just they're stealing enough that we yeah. don't have to pay them. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I never had to do any work while I was uh working and coaching. Oh, you know? wow. Yeah. Well, I, I think though, I think John's got a point, and I think the NC2A has just been exposed uh in the recent study that said they're all about the basketball contract because that pays the bills. Sure. And, and they've been negligent because of that, because they've done everything they can to facilitate that, those millions and millions of dollars that come in and they won't function if they don't have that contract. Let me tell you, they can't no. function. Well, they're so, going to have to work out a way to have that contract and still take care of their athletes because otherwise they're going to, it's going to be a real nightmare. Or maybe the well, SEC will just become the governing body, right? You know, well, yeah. I, they're, they're working toward that. I no doubt <laughs> yeah. about that. Separate themselves and separate everything. Yeah. Well, that, that may very well happen, and, and it'll 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 really turn things around. I mean, the NCAA has really got to step up and come up with some of the answers to to this new legislation. Oh yeah. Well, the the thing I was because I was actually thinking through some of this the other day. The NCAA start off basically as a national championship management organization they weren't involved in all this other stuff and at a certain point they just started taking more and more control over things for better or for worse the the interesting contrast for me is okay one of the central tenets of of the ncaa is the amateurism which was has been defended as being to keep the student part of student athlete um 
and but they've also gone on and introduced all the rules on you know limitations of playing season and 20 hours a week and all that sort of stuff so you know where where is the professionalism side of that contradicting with what they're already doing with things like yeah you can only practice 20 hours a week it, to my mind it basically that those limitations pretty much offset the considerations of the professionalism especially now when we have nil coming in that's introducing the all those would-be professional considerations of now i gotta think about contracts and agents and all this other yeah. stuff but so all that all that goes away john all that has to go away otherwise they get sued even more they get sued because you keep people from making an uh, you get sued for all these different things. Now, they don't want any of these lawsuits. They're tired of paying out lawsuits and spending their time doing that. So uh, I think you're going to see the NC2A come up with a, a governing deal that puts all of the pressure back on the conferences to to do all of the um, uh, rules and all of that stuff. Yeah, I, yeah. I tend to agree because... A lot of the other kind of the other side of NC two A was uh, level playing field, but we haven't had a level playing field ever. if ever. <laughs> I mean, look at the last twenty years. We've had a total of eight different national champions in women's volleyball. Three of those teams have won more than half combined. At this point, only two conferences regularly send teams in, and and if you look at Big Tw Big Ten. Pac-12, they account for the, the combined two finalists for like 16 out of those last 22 years or something like that. Well, even the scholarships aren't even because of the rules of several of the different universities. We've only had two, two universities in the last 10 years win the all sports trophy. Uh, it's been the same, <laughs> same university, nine out of 10. Mm -hmm. uh, and rightfully so, they have set up a, a way that they can have more people on aid than anybody else in the country. So, uh, I mean, people don't like to say that and they don't want to hear that, but that's absolutely the truth. And um, it's, it's something that uh, somebody's going to have to deal with, or you just keep going on like you're going on and, and uh, take, take them on, uh, even though you, you have one hand tied behind your back. Okay. Ruth, I'm just, glad you're back. Oh, Ruth is back. All okay. right. All how right, did you, just how'd you find that mute button, Ruth? We, we <laughs> pushed that mute button and uh... I did. I cut it completely off. Okay, I'm just in time. Well, our time is up, and thanks for joining us today for a buzz reaction. We thank our guests for providing their insight on NIL. And for those that aren't familiar, name, image, and likeness, and also the great conversation with master coaches. For those coaches that are interested in our consulting services, please go directly to our website www.volleyballmastercoaches.com. Click on the contact form and look forward to customizing the in-person or a virtual clinic for you. A very special shout out to all those 86 guests who have shared their insights with us over the viewers for 63 weeks. Can you believe that? Be sure to tell your friends about our weekly news show. And thanks for joining us on The Buzz. And I am back to normal. Ha, 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 ha.